Welcome back to uh, Hour 3 of the Nutri Medical Report, uh, Preparedness, Civil Defense, Earth Changes Hour. We have back since a long hiatus, Alexander Bach was a major report on the buildup in the countries surrounding America of Chinese and Russian troop activity. Uh, Ann Morris with major updates on uh, Earth changes occurring. And, of course, at the bottom of the hour, Christina Consolo talking about Fukushima, radiation damage to songbirds, insects, and plants, not only in Fukushima, Japan, but here in North America and around the world. Real Earth changes, galactic and solar weather occurring. Uh, let's start off with a report from Alexander. Uh, it's not finalized yet, but you've got the draft uh, in near completion. What's your website? Is it called? A, do you go to alexanderbackman.com, B-A-C-K-M-A-N.com? Precisely. It's a report. I, I We closed it uh, just for a dollar. You can read it. Uh, you can help us out with that. Just pitch in a dollar, and we can provide it, uh, the PDF finalized, well-referenced article. Uh, it, it took some while to research all of this, but you know it's worth it because eventually we're maturing the information in order to get it to the appropriate hands. So right. things can and measures can be taken to stop uh, this uh, ongoing invasion because it is an invasion by stealth. It's already going. It's well, ongoing. It's all, just uh, yeah. There, just uh, for example, today there was uh, yeah. another alert uh, by a person in Kentucky uh, emailing Steve Quayle that there were five black helicopters uh, with Russian markings flying over Kentucky and uh, looking for landing zones. Yeah, uh, when I was in Colorado, people might think, "Oh, this is over the top." I had military contacts as a civilian. I had all kinds of contacts that were still working with the military and had contracts with them. And there were all kinds of activities back in the mid-90s. This is not something new with the Obama administration. This has been going on for decades, probably since the 70s when, when Richard Nixon went to China. But we have foreign troops on our soil learning weapons and tactics from the former CIS nations, Russia and China, and the Pike National Forest, all over Colorado and other states. Uh, some of them are embedded. They're actually here. I remember in the same apartment building that I was at in the last year I was in practice in Colorado. I had moved my family back to Canada, and I was still in the process of closing my practice in 2004. There was a Russian group of Russian men who were not employed. It was like seven of them. They all looked like special forces. And I can tell you, just from the conversation and their activities, they weren't employed. Uh, we see this all over the place, okay? We're not just talking about guys that look like special forces. We're talking about actual troop movements, actual vehicles, and other material. Plus, we have to understand that the Mexican government and the global governments, you know, we've got to remember the Mexican government has been cooperative with the globalists. They've cooperated with uh, the sale of all the highways to the People's Republican Ar Ar uh, Army, the PLA, Hutchinson Wampoa that the Russians have had major troop movements in Venezuela and the pre-placement of uh, nuclear missile silos in the Guatemalan Mexican border in the jungle uh, of the border of Mexico and Guatemala as well as in uh, Venezuela. Uh, this is no joke. People need to understand that at any one time there's all kinds of activity in preparation and that's why they're training uh, Mexican federales to come up to America if there's ever quote, a natural disaster or reason to invite them. Now imagine this scenario, Chinese nuclear warheads in on Mexican soil. Not surprising at all. Okay. Is Not surprising see? at all, but people yeah. don't understand that. <clears throat> what Obama's doing on the economic scale, and I just read a report from Mr. Weiss, actually, who lives outside of uh, Shanghai. He's a major investment advisor, which I got his report. And what it basically says is that Obama and the globalists are collaborating to devalue the U.S. dollar majorly in the near future while they raise the yuan so they can reduce the debt that they have to pay with lower cost dollars but it'll destroy our economy. This is designed to make China, as Mr. Maurice Strong says, the prescient power in the new world order and they'll dictate to America. By the way, they owe us more than two trillion dollars going back to before the communist revolution which they refused to pay. We had an expert on a few months ago about this. And so called, when people think that, quote, we have to borrow from China, we don't have to borrow from anybody. If we took over the Fed Reserve, we just coined the money we need, and it would be the full face and value of the American government, and the Hamiltonian system would allow us to create the credit, and we wouldn't pay interest to a bunch of global banksters. But we don't do that, because we have criminals in our Senate and our Congress and our presidency who won't tell the truth. Well, what really got us is uh, basically the fact that, I mean, you have... Um, HPH, I, I spoke with a person, you know, that works for HPH. That's why I got on top of this, because this person told me about the, the lack of security at Mexican ports that are, in fact, controlled by Hutchinson Port Holdings, which is really a subsidiary 
of uh, Hutchison Wampoa, the biggest, uh, uh, I mean, Chinese, Hong Kong, whatever you want, controller of uh, 136 ports around the world, including in Bahamas. They, they Freeport, control the, Freeport, the, 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 Freeport what Bahamas, the, the largest. The Panama uh, Canal, even. Yeah, Panama Canal, Freeport, Hot Bahamas, the largest non-U.S. port. And what they do now, by the way, according to the globalists, they want the cargo, without being checked or even opening the cargo to see if there's nuclear materials or weapons or anything in there, they want it shipped from Freeport, Bahamas, and the, in, the, the final port destination where they can open the containers or, or attach them to, to shipping logs and send them out in trucks or on a train, is Kansas City. That's the, quote, inland port. So it gets checked in Freeport, Bahamas, by foreign agents that want to act as proxies for the U.S. Customs agents. That's our government collaborating with the Communist Chinese. And we, so, have, we have also the situation with Lázaro Cárdenas in Michoacán, uh, which is an enormous operation by uh, HWL, and that's where they plan to do this super corridor into Kansas City, right? Into Kansas. Right. Yeah, by the now, way, none of it stopped, including the so-called governor of Texas. They just broke it up into pieces so people wouldn't protest the Trans-Texas Corridor and these other super corridors. And 100% of the funding for these super highways and super ports in, in Mexico are completely paid for by the communist Chinese. And by the way, there's 80 million communists in China. The rest are slaves to a slave state. And uh, it's really very ugly. People don't well, understand. We have confirmation of this. We have confirmation from uh, Mexican businessmen that uh, do their dealings with China on a regular basis. They travel once a month to China, and they confirm that all the investment that China is doing south of the border <laughs> is for military operations uh, at the end of the road when they finally come and do uh, uh, their invasion, whatever they want to do. Well, they're doing an economic invasion. Most people don't realize the single country that's doing $200 billion of industrial espionage per month and the single country that's buying more land and more agricultural land and property per month than any other country is China. China. It's crazy. 80% of the new billionaires in the last decade are Chinese. These are communists that have taken over all the property from all the other citizens and we're dumping, now they're dumping money from all over the world, including speculative banking and with the lack of Glass-Steagall. And it's all ending up in, in Chinese coffers, and their superheated economy is still growing seven times faster than ours, even though it's slowing down. And their biggest problem is they can't store all the stuff they're making. They're building warehouses to store it because they, they can't shut down their factories. Even though their economy is growing so fast, they're generating 10 employees for one job in China, and they're sucking up all of the manufacturing on the planet. Precisely, and there's a very important tie-in here between HWL and the PLA. Uh, uh, basically, uh, Li Ka-shing, who's uh, this super billionaire from uh, Asia, uh, who was a high school dropout and uh, basically became, you know, uh, suddenly the instant billionaire of Asia, uh, is an 85-year-old man that uh, basically you know, signed deals with the People's Liberation Army over there in Hong Kong and Practically, he sold out to the Chinese military and the Chinese Navy. The, the, what worries us is that Mexican ports, the vital Mexican ports, if, a, if, if an invasion, a military invasion, incursion by the Chinese or by the Russians, or, or I call it, you know, the, 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 well, the alliance, the unholy alliance, because you got North Korea in the mix, you have uh, Iran, you have Sudan, and m many other many others, the, the ports in Mexico are already compromised. Veracruz, Lázaro Cárdenas, Ensenada, Baja California, uh, they are compromised, and Manzanillo in Colima, they're compromised to these interests. And, you know, who's going to stop them from uh, allowing uh, mass well, deposits of weapons coming into our country uh, unchecked? This person I spoke at the port told me that, in fact, you know, there, there is no re real opening of containers is just a fast track mechanism well, uh, of just pressing a button and you're getting yeah. a green or a red light right 90 percent of 97 percent of the weapons that i've been told go through long beach through the chinese pla port in long beach california go directly to the gangs in america made in china uh the fact is that uh, they're getting ready but they want to have what i call an invit invasion in other words they're being invited with these we call trade zones in Haido and right across the country And we're back. Um, Alexander, There's a let, let's expand on that report, because this one that we had up in the BBC News here is a little incorrect. It says, in Mexico, uh, police fire on U.S. Embassy. 
Uh, you mentioned on the break that there were false you, uh, Mexican police checkpoints. Uh, apparently, they fired at these diplomats, and they had armor-piercing weapons because they went through a bulletproof car. Uh, some of the uh, officials were apparently wounded in their car. Uh, they also apparently, I think there were two Marines in the vehicle as well uh, with these diplomats. Uh, they were fleeing from another car, so obviously there's a third car involved here. Sounds very scrambly in terms of what's going on. We know that the drug trade is a way of laundering money for keeping liquid capital coming into the United States to keep the economy floating rather than to, to just take over the Fed Reserve. Uh, and the drug cartels are part of the game. Um, you know, what's what's happening here? What, what's going on? Is this tied in with the Chinese issue, or is it something just a corrupt government down in Mexico that allows this to happen? Well, in Mexico, the only institution that works now is uh, corruption. Corruption is the, the institution of the 21st century for a failed state like Mexico. So uh, what we're seeing here is it could be that... Uh, the Mexican federal police is already corrupt as it is, so it could be that they they fired upon uh, an armored vehicle that was uh, traveling uh, south to the small city of Cuernavaca, uh, 30 minutes south of Mexico City, uh, from the U.S. Embassy. It had uh, American personnel, three were injured, uh, that's what we know so far. But what could be happening is that the federal, the, the drug cartels, they have uniforms of the federal police and they can just put them on at random and open up a checkpoint at will. And uh, people think it's an official checkpoint, but in fact, it could be um, used yeah, by that's them. A, that's what I heard they, the latest uh, is that the Zeta cartel is really getting much more aggressive. Uh, and uh, I don't understand why the U.S. doesn't collaborate with the Me Mexican government and send in the Marines and a full armed forces and actually just clean out these drug cartels. Why don't they just, instead of putting more forces into Iraq and Afghanistan, send a full force in there with air attack and everything and clean out this, this rat nest? Well, it's very simple. That's what we asked for uh, from the get-go. I mean, if you're going to isolate uh, the cartels, do it well. And uh, you evacuate even one of the states where they're operating, evacuate what, all what people you, what, as an emergency you do is you, war. You put a uh, note on notice so you're going to evacuate people to a, a place where they're going to get food and shelter out of exactly. the uh, war, war zone. Then you actually cut off all the roads and set up a perimeter. And then you start an air attack on them and then clean them out like rats. That's it. And, and, and I, it's real simple. You know where they are. you got satellite photos that can track exactly where they are. Uh, by the way, with satellite photos, you can even track the signature of molecules. If you want to see a big depot of cocaine, they can see with a thing called nuclear uh, spectroscopy from space called, uh, called, uh, called uh, uh, ion spectroscopy, which is basically the torsion field of the molecules, and they can actually tell you if there's a deposit of gold or oil or if there's a molecule like cocaine. They can actually see it. Uh, yeah. Even if it's inside a building, it's shielded behind walls, etc., they can see it. And the fact is that there's a large deposit. You know the surrounding area, and you can see, if you look at your satellite photos, you can see all kinds of trucks moving and people walking around with fully automatic weapons and body armor. Uh, what could be easier, especially with our advanced technology? Yeah, Even and all the U.S. drones that are flying over Mexican airspace. And, uh, Take those predator know, drones instead of knocking off members of Al-Qaeda, start knocking off these guys and uh, go in and, uh, and do it properly, you know. Yeah, you know, there's an interview. I rarely talk about, you know, the drug war because uh, as journalists in Mexico, we get targeted all the time. Um, it's getting worse each day. But, you know, I just did an interview in English uh, for CRN. It's at alexanderbachman.com. People want to read it. But there, you know, I talk about the, the recent Le Monde uh, article that talks about, I translated the article from French to English, excuse my French translation, but uh, Mexico, the spiral of cruelty, it's called, and basically, you know, what really got me there is that Le Monde is very harsh and critical against Calderon. But, you know, the new uh, uh, estimates of death, deaths by uh, Felipe Calderon's uh, sexenium of death, uh, is already at 120,000 people dead. That's crazy. This is way exceeding the war, Gulf One and Two, and the Afghanistan war, and... You know, it, it's hard to believe that this is occurring on our border and we're allowing it. Plus, by the way, it's the major thing feeding into, uh, you know, armed holdups and, uh, and, and contract killings inside the United States in cities like Phoenix or Los Angeles or San Diego. Uh, it's the number one reason. And, and the thing is, uh, I mean, you just go to Logan Heights in San Diego. I mean, you got them right there. And we have the situation where 
uh, Lamon is ca- uh, cataloging this as the most fatal conflict on the planet in recent years. That's south of the border. That's how dangerous the situation is really getting. Well, I, I, I'll really tell you what I, with it. what I think of it. You've ever heard of, you know, when you're, if you're a firefighter, you see what's called a fire zone. And I have a suspicion that the reason why they leave the drug cartels in this war to occur on, on the northern border of Mexico is because they want this fire zone to scare people so they won't try to cross into America and they won't want Americans to escape into Mexico either if something happens in the United States. Uh, I'm suspicious that because this could be easily cleaned up in probably a couple of weeks if we did a properly logistically analyzed uh, if you want to call it a war against drugs, a real war, not and by the way, you need to make drugs not illegal, but you need to make it uh, in such a way that if someone's involved with an illegal, illegal drug, quote, they lose their rights and they have a medical doctor do a drug test. If you're positive, you're going to drug rehab. That's the end of it. And when people want to argue with Dr. Deagle, it's like, forget it. As soon as you're now addicted to a dangerous drug that's going to cause your suicide or the destruction of your life and your family, you're now going to a facility. You are, and once you get well and we rehab, we're going to monitor you and we're going to do drug testing to make sure you stay clean. It's real simple. Uh, then you stop uh, the prison population, you stop sending people to prison for drug use, and you simply help them to stay well and keep themselves clean. And what's even worse with the new statistics coming out, you know, the hom- homicides and everything uh, going on the rise, we have a situation where we don't have the the, the charts right now, but I saw them, and basically, you know, you had... Uh, uh, most of the deaths on the northern border, you had them on the states uh, along the U.S.-Mexico corridor there. But now it's all over the country. Now it's normalized, and the killings are everywhere now. Right. You know, yeah. and now, that's not good news. That means uh, the cartels are expanding. We have 25 new cartels in Mexico right now. Why don't I change gears just for a minute, and I want you to stay, uh, Alexander, because we're going to continue some dialogue here. Sure. And we've got to talk about uh, sinkholes, a space weather, and other changes. And it ties, by the way, with what's going on in Mexico. Um, China is in a disaster. They already are in what's called a pre-famine status, which is why they're buying up farmland everywhere. They're setting up farms, trying to buy farms in, in Brazil, in Mexico, ex- importing food. Uh, and, and the Chinese people have discovered meat. They've also discovered driving. I watched a video yesterday and watched the Chinese driving. The most dangerous thing to do in the world is to actually go on a, on a Chinese highway and try to see people without, chain, without signaling changing lanes like they're on cocaine. It's really bad. And, uh, you know, they have 140,000 deaths in the, per year, even though they have 38% less cars in America. That shows you how nuts it is there. And uh, the Chinese basically are on slave labor. They want have higher and higher wages. The U.S. government are pushing for a higher yuan so it can quote, make it more competitive when in actual fact they want to just be able to pay off the debt because they want to have a, a world which is, you know, Russia and China on one side and America and Britain and Canada and the other nations on the other side so we, this world is, is controlled by the banks. And they're all jockeying for position, which is why China is fully collaborating with the globalists in our Washington, D.C. White House uh, to literally hand over America. Uh, so it won't just be an invasion, it'll be invite invasion. Just like these trade zones. When we come back, we're going to talk with Anne about space weather and other changes to the Earth, and Christina Consola will be joining us as well. I remember when, I remember Welcome I remember back, when and um, Anne, tell us the latest in space weather, uh, sinkholes, what else is going on in our solar system in terms of... Uh, the uh, sun swinging around with that solar sunspot and other activity occurring with UV. And you sent me a very shocking report earlier today about the government uh, back in March doing a little experiment that I thought was uh, what I call Dr. Strangelove-ish in terms of putting uh, some aluminum in the upper atmosphere. Tell us all about that. Well, they've been doing this as part of a HARP, you know, High Altitude Research Project, and they've been doing this around the world. And what they do is they send up an aluminum compound um, that burns with the oxygen. And um, uh, it's uh, then when they're sending it up as far as the troposphere, the D and E bands, which are the lower two bands of the troposphere, and then it, as the dust falls, as the aluminum dust falls, it uh, burns with the oxygen, and then they can see it because it's very bright. Yeah, it also and depletes the oxygen, so it can deplete the. Uh, you, do you think it might be a major factor, along with the xenon 133 and radioiodine, uh, actually depleting the ozone? Because we know the UV index has been 
off the charts. So and it happened right after Fukushima. Now we know that the geoengineering, which Dr. Isley showed me back in 1997, the World Constitution Parliament Association, that the globalists have been doing to geoengineer not only the air on the troposphere, but the thermosphere. And you introduced this term about a year ago uh, that goes up to, what, 60 kilometers or so above the Earth. They've been messing with the planet without any permission, haven't they? Well, it's the government. This is a NASA experiment, and uh, they use um, trimethyl uh, aluminum, TMA, and it forms milky white clouds. And so what they wanted to do, the experiment had nothing to do with changing the weather. The experiment, well, that's what they said. <laughs> yeah. What they wanted to do was they wanted to see how the how the wind well we don't have much wind in the thermosphere because it's so high above the gr ground but they wanted to see whether the wind was simple or complex in other words when they when the aluminum ignited with the oxygen that was up there it produced a bright light and they could uh photograph it and then uh, look at the patterns and they could tell whether the whether the atmosphere at that level was moving all in one direction or whether it was yeah being i'm sure that's around. actually it. That, I don't believe that that's probably the real reason. My guess is that's a complex scientific lie. The real issue is, they, and Dr. Isley told me, they want to change the albedo or the reflectance of the Earth, and they're all trying to tell us, like I got the latest National Geographic, that, oh, my gosh, what's up with the weather? You know, that's the front of the magazine. What's really up with the weather is these maniacs trying to shove down our throat the idea that uh, CO2 is a death gas, when really that's not the main thing. The death gases are things like from China, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and other volatile chemicals that are destroying the ozone, and these idiots putting uh, nanoparticle thorium, strontium, and aluminum up there that chew up the oxygen, which destroy the ozone layer. That's really deadly to crops and human beings, and it causes ground-level ozone to occur down here that's toxic to us. So, uh, you know, besides all the changes occurring to the planet from volcanism in the oceans, these guys are amplifying the problem dramatically by not cleaning up pollution in China and Indonesia and these other countries like India. And on the other hand, they're putting up stuff to make the problem much, much worse. Anyway, they did this in March uh, of this year, and they shot five, uh, they put them on rockets, and they shot five canisters of this TMA into the uh, thermosphere, which is above the stratosphere. Right. And then it uh, burns slowly, but it uses up the oxygen. Well, then in the fall of this year, we discover we've got an ozone hole over Greenland. And uh, so, coincidentally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it looks to me like what happened was they burned up the oxygen that normally would have been in the stratosphere. Uh, and then when the sun's um, ultraviolet light hits it, uh, causes makes ozone. And so then that's why you have an ozone layer. So it looks like the result of their experiment, they got their pictures that they wanted, and uh, but they, uh, it looks like they also created an ozone hole um, bigger than the, than the size of uh, the country of Greenland. And it looks like it's centered just about where they shot up this rocket full of uh, TMA, trimethyl aluminum. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. You had another report out as well that you sent today, uh, and tell us about that. Oh, okay. Well, about the, uh, about the uh, information suppression. Uh. Yeah, this was um, this was published by uh, MSNBC, and it was published in uh, on August fifteenth uh, this year. So it was, you know, it's about last a week, week old or so. Yeah, it was yeah. last week, and um, scientists have uh, have. Uh, well, there are natural fireball events in Earth's atmosphere. You know, we have meteors that come in, we have asteroids that come in, and then, of course, we have the debris from the um, satellite programs, and uh, they eventually um, burn up in the atmosphere. Well, uh, scientists have been studying that, and uh, now a recent United States military policy decision explicitly states that observations by hush-hush government spacecraft of incoming bolides and fireballs are classified secret and not to be released. Yeah, in other words, and we have reports, in fact, I looked at one today from Australia, we have a report of this uh, doctor, I believe his name is pronounced Ramos, a senior astronomer in Brazil that identified, they call it Nibiru, I don't like to call it that, I call it the uh, red dwarf star that comes in a periodic cycle from deep below the ecliptic every 3600 plus a few years, 12 to 15 years, 
uh, and that has a debris field around it of objects that rotate it like a, because it's a small star, uh, that that comes back in periodic cycles. It's a red dwarf, not a brown dwarf star. It has a very powerful magnetic field, so it's likely to produce not only gravitonic effects, but more significantly coronal mass ejections and major solar storms. Uh, they don't want you to know that this is actually coming in. It really is coming in. This is no joke. And I don't, and I, we didn't put dates on it, by the way. But we can tell you that we have reports from Australia, from the South Pole Telescope, from IRAS. And by the way, the Arecibo, which is a radio telescope, can see this. Because you can see it by radio telescope, you can see it by infrared, and you can see it by x-ray. That's how you identify this object coming in. It is now also close enough in that from Antarctica, from southern, from Australia, from especially the east side of Australia and New Zealand, they can see this now. So if there's anybody down there and you're an astronomer or you have access, you need to contact us with any photos or independent corroboration. They've actually stated also on YouTube, according to John today, YouTube's made statements that anything posted on uh, Nibiru that looks real solid science or from one of these sources, they're going to remove it within six minutes. Um, your comments, uh, Alexander. Well, you know, we know the red dwarf star is uh, the biggest threat. It, it also ties into the terraforming of the planet uh, for nefarious means. I mean, why would, why else would you be uh, modifying, you know, the upper layers of the atmosphere unless you wanted to terraform the Earth for the visitors? Well, it's, well, it's not just visitors. I know they talk about the, the Nibirans and all this stuff. What I was told from Space Command, and this is what I was told, is that they, in this 94, that they were expecting a major event to cause coronal mass ejections, and the reason why they're putting at Buckley and Peterson Air Force Base these nanoparticles up was to protect the Earth, like like Teller ta talked about back in the 50s, at about 20,000 miles out into space, but not in the upper troposphere or the thermosphere, at, to protect it from CMEs knocking out civilization. So what they told me was, this had nothing to do with visitors or anything. This was literally to shield the Earth from a major solar storm that they expected sometime to happen, they told me, within the next 20 years. And that was the well, mid-90s. Yeah, so, it's a cyclical process. We know that, uh, you know, Cliff High yeah. has documented this very, very well. And the way that uh, the, the sun, you know, it, it starts, you know, spinning counterclockwise um, um, both of its hemispheres, uh, one clockwise, the other one counterclockwise. So it starts to wind up in, in its core. And every, you know, X uh, 10,000 years, it, it releases an excessive amount of energy like a super coronal mass ejection but uh, uh, that would dwarf the ones that we have today. And uh, it would just really affect our planet. We'd go to magnetic well, zero probably, you know, and get just fried. By it depends on whether or not it's pointed at us, because obviously we've had a lot of big ones lately, and you, you've had some reports of some pretty darn big uh, M and X class. Luckily, they missed us. It's almost like a yep. blindfolded maniac on a spinning platform with a shotgun, but they're not a good aim. Thank God. But it has. Uh, we've been grazed by them recently, and if it had a direct hit, a lot of the power in different parts of the world would go. Um, combined with all the other earth changes like the pumping in India that caused their power grid to go down, the grid is going. And if you don't believe that, you're going to be surprised in the next few years that the grid is going. And I wonder, do we have Christina Consolo? Are you there? Christina? Doesn't look like we do. Uh, it's the, uh, and when you hear about this stuff in space weather and we, and we see these things happening, uh, where do you think it's going in the next, uh, you know, number of months? Because we know the, uh, I call the Passover stars approaching, probably in the next number of months or years. We know that we're going to have, a, in 2013, a major increase in cycle 24 of coronal mass ejections. Uh, they should have immediately, three years ago when they passed the congressional bill, uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski, a Democrat, uh, pushed for a green energy bill in the Senate and actually blocked the uh, Senate approval of the bill that would harden the power grid against coronal mass ejections. Uh, the world's not ready for this. If we have major solar storms, the first thing that's going to happen is the grid's going to go. And I tell people this straight away. My process for power is, number one, uh, I have a 20-kilowatt generator with two 500-gallon uh, tanks. I've searched around and found out, by the way, there's several different uh, solar panel systems. The most advanced one I've seen so far, believe it or not, is Israeli. The Israelis, uh, and there's a professor there, I hope to maybe get him on the program, he's uh, decided to uh, use a very efficient uh, solar panel that's very small, and he actually focuses from a number of mirrors to the panel and can produce immense amounts of power. They have a, 
a actual setup uh, for producing many kilowatts of power here in California from his company that's manufacturing parts of that like crazy in in Israel. That's the most advanced. I've seen other systems that are out there, but this one has tried and proven, and it's not a Stirling engine using water to create steam and then generate power. It goes directly from sunlight and mirrors directly to power and can also heat water so you can get thermal heating of water for your home and power. And by the way, the cost per kilowatt is lower than gasoline, natural gas, and other technologies. So this is a major breakthrough. And by the way, it's 2007 when he made this breakthrough, so there was five years old. Uh, so I tell people you need to get lithium pyrophosphate batteries, which I'm in the process. I've, I've got a company we're going to be bringing on the program, and power controller. You need to be uh, have a water storage uh, system for rain collection, and if you have a, don't have a well and you could get a well, get a well. You need to be ready with f- five-gallon store snackable judges, jug, jugs. You need to have prepare-wise dehydrated food in mylar bags, uh, seeds, a greenhouse, ways to filter your water against radioisotopes and other toxins because they're putting all kinds of garbage in the air, including nanoparticle aluminum, which goes directly to your brain. It causes a thing called middle ion syndrome in the caudate and putamen nucleus. It can cause an extrapyramidal syndrome uh, that can cause brain damage. It happens with people on renal dialysis because they can't remove the aluminum. Um, what do you think, Ann? Where Where is this going in the next uh, few years? Where The space weather issue and solar cycle 24, I think 2013 is going to turn out to be a scary year in terms of CME and uh, lack of preparedness. Well, I agree with you, and I think the next two years, actually, you know, this is the year before the peak, and then there'll be the year after the peak. So it's not just uh, 2013, it's all the way from 2012 to 2014. Right. And uh, we've already had a, a uh, solar flare that just uh, scared <laughs> scared the scientists speechless. Uh, it came in July 12th. It was an X 1.4. Now, normally we don't think an X 1.4 is all that big because it's just slightly above an M 9.9. But uh, this one, uh, not only did it uh, energize the ionosphere, it also dumped a lot of ionized protons into the atmosphere, so right. much so that, that we saw auroras as far south as Arkansas. And I have a picture of an aurora over St. Louis. Right, but it also did another thing. It did a thing called pulsing the Earth with ultraviolet light as well. Did, did a, uh, it, they called it strobing, and that, that's yeah. never been reported before. Now, this was all in an after report. There was no forewarning on no this. No forewarning on it. Now, here's what would happen if you get major strobing of ultraviolet light. You can destroy crops because it's a matter of a day or two of high-energy strobing of the Earth. Number two, it can cause cataracts. It can cause a thing called pterygion, P-T-Y-E-R-G-I-O-N. It can cause skin damage. It can suppress your T-cells throughout your body for surveillance of cancer. It can throw off your immune system so you can get an infection, like a pneumonia or sinus infection or whatever. So people think that it's not benign. You know, Ultraviolet light, we call A is tanning light, B is burn, C is cancer, and D is called death. Ultraviolet light can be very, very nasty. It also, ultraviolet light can penetrate through the ice and dissolve ice faster than heat. So ultraviolet light in the northern atmosphere where the ozone hole is actually is literally melting the snow from above while the permafrost and the underlying uh, under oceanic volcanism from the Gakkao Range and other areas is, is melting the snow and the ice uh, from, the, from below. So yeah, high energy ultraviolet light, those both are very, very bad for the polar caps. NASA showed pictures of the Greenland ice cap, and um, it showed it uh, one day on July 8th and then one day on uh, July 12th. I guess that's when the satellite passed over it. And in those four days, sometime in those four days, the ice, the ice cap melted. The top layer of the ice cap melted. Right. And it's an astonishing picture. I mean, uh, that's yeah, how much wanna... UV energy yeah. came in through the ozone hole that sits over Greenland. Right. Yeah, if you, in other words, you take a big block of ice and you want to carve it, you don't carve it with infrared light. You carve it with ultraviolet. Our ultraviolet light will penetrate in many, many feet, even much deeper than that, create giant crevasses and these water channels in the ice. And when it starts to move, then it can further crack, and then you've got real problems. So, and you uh, know that if, that if that ice sheet on Greenland were to uh, melt and, and go into the ocean, that uh, the level of the ocean, the ocean level would go up by 100 feet. Yeah, it's estimated between 100 and 140 feet if it's totally melted, because the amount of the, the amount of actual fresh water on the Earth, I think uh, the Iceland 
uh, ice sheet, which is actually depressing it into the crust of the earth, is so large, I think it's actually something like 24 to 30 some percent of the entire fresh water on the planet is actually locked in that ice sheet. Yeah, and, and you know, at one time, Greenland was green. There were, there were people that lived on Greenland, much like Iceland. Yeah. But uh, then the uh, little ice age came and covered it with the glacier. And that glacier, like you said, uh, if the whole thing should... Uh, now, this UV strobing, they, they're saying that they think that the top of the ice sheet is, is uh, being frozen again from underneath. But I haven't seen any fi- pictures to that effect. Yeah, it, it, this thing will happen on and off, but the problem is we're going to have major calving of new icebergs. Uh, you can see it off the coast of Newfoundland. Uh, I've seen the iron icebergs, and there's a whole trail that goes along the coast between Labrador and Newfoundland, and these things are enormous. I mean, you have no idea how big. They make giant uh, super tankers look like little tiny little acorns floating out in the water when you compare them to these icebergs. They're, they're immense. And then the CME hit, and, you know, the power went out in India for two days. Now, we don't know if the CME is directly causative. Was it around that same time when it went out? Yep. So it was a combination of, C- of increased load because they were pumping water from the drought and the CME. So was it the same date that that happened then? Um, fairly close, yes. Yeah. And now, of course, if you have stress systems, we, you also lose equipment, too. They, don't, they are not studying the effect of the CME on either Greenland, the Greenland ice sheet or on the Indian power outage. I mean, there's no studies underway. The other, that, thing that, uh, uh, the other thing that people should be aware of, and we talked about this because the warning system here at the University of California is actually tell your current measurements of the tectonic San Andreas fault system. So their warning system is to measure the ground currents of piezoelectric <laughs> electricity. And so if you have major CME activity, the piezoelectric t- activity can reach what's called the piezoelectric slip threshold, which can cause San Andreas to release its energy. Now, in, in Los Angeles, in the area that's just outside of Los Angeles where the San Andreas Fault goes, mm-hmm. uh, I think they call it the Northridge area, that area has 12 feet of recoil of the rocks. And if it moves six inches in one movement, it would destroy 75% of the standing structures in Los Angeles. Six inches out of 12 feet. I was in Pasadena when the, when the uh, Northridge earthquake uh, struck, and I knew people that lived up in there. Yeah, and it, it, I mean it. <laughs> it was it was the strongest earthquake I ever felt. Yeah, well, the one that we went through uh, Easter uh, 2011. Yeah. It was, and we have our houses actually drilled and rebar into blue granite, which is the second hardest granite on the planet, besides the granite that makes uh, stones in, in Scotland. And we're at a thousand feet. There's a mountain behind us that's another 700, 800 feet high. And uh, we have, our home is about 4,500 square feet and around, around 6,000 square feet of concrete. And it was like you're on top of a rubber sheet. And the sound was so loud. What I'm really surprised is how loud earthquakes are. Everything was moving and rattling. Everything was making so much noise, it was like 100 decibels. It was crazy. It was like being behind a jet engine. Remember, rattle, rattle, rattle for about like 25 to 35 seconds. Uh, Anyway, it's a real shame that the uh, d- that the data from the classified satellites is no longer being sent down to NASA. That's a, a real red flag. Is that, you know, as they say in the in the uh, government, or if you're an, a forensic investigator like John Moore, uh, don't believe that they're lying until they actually try to cover up what you're looking for. In other words, when they start to say that you can't see the data, oops, that's a big oops. Now, you can no longer put it in the. You guys are those spooky conspiracy theorists know the government now doesn't want us to even look at the data that's a big red flag isn't it that's amazing. right Bill yep amazing a great report uh, Ann Morrison Alexander Bachman we'll have Christina Consolo back next week with our report somehow we didn't connect today but we will have her back uh, take care everybody take action take action